Today, I'm gonna walk you through all the steps and everything you should know about buying a half a beef or half a hog. Do you wanna support your local farmer? Or maybe you're just watching grocery store prices go up and up and up and you're thinking, I really need to get my freezer stocked before I can't afford to eat meat anymore. Or maybe you want to know that the meat that you're eating was raised responsibly and ethically. Those are all great reasons to buy a half a beef or half a hog, but it can be really overwhelming. The first time I ever looked into buying half a beef, I was at the farmer's market in California and there was a rancher with his table and a chest of meat and he had a poster up that said, reserve your half a beef now. So I walked up and I said, so how much does it cost for half a beef? And he said, well, it kind of depends on how big they're raised to and you have to pay the butcher and, and I thought, hmm, okay, well, uh, how much meat will I get from a half a beef? Well, again, that depends on, and he, as he went on, my mind kind of checked out because I just thought, I have more questions now than when I started. And I don't want you to have that same experience. So we're gonna walk through this step by step and I've got so many hints and tips that's gonna make this process so much less overwhelming for you. If you wanna buy a half a beef or half a hog, the first step is gonna be finding a local farmer. And there are several ways you can do that. You can look on Facebook, you can ask your friends and neighbors, you can um, go to a farmer's market, or you could just do a Google search. And I do want to emphasize that it is important to buy from a local farmer. I've had friends in other states ask me if I could raise an animal for them, and I could do that, but then they would have to drive to me and bring that home. That's a lot of added extra expense. And I usually suggest that they buy from their local farmer because that's gonna cost them less and it's gonna keep the money in their communities. It's gonna keep the farming community where they live alive. And you'd be surprised how close to urban centers you can find people who are raising animals in a great way. And so I really suggest you find a farmer local to you. After you have found a farmer, you're gonna to have to pay a deposit. That's just so that they know you're not gonna flake out at the last minute. And you can expect the deposit to range anywhere from $50 to $150. The farmers have to book a date at the butchers six months to a year in advance. And they wanna know that they have a serious customer who's going to actually follow through on buying this meat almost a year later. Once your animal has been delivered to the butcher, the next thing that's gonna happen is that your farmer is gonna call you and you're gonna to have to pay them your portion of that animal. I'm gonna go into that a little more in depth later in the video, but that would be the next step. After that, it's your responsibility to call the butcher and talk through all the different cuts of meat that you want. Again, I've got some tools that can help you with that too. The last thing that will happen is you're gonna to go to the butcher, pick up your meat, bring it home, and stock up your freezer. And possibly, that's gonna be the best meat you've ever had in your life. I remember the first time that we ate a roast from a pig that we had raised, it was the most tender meat I had ever tasted. And I really thought, is this just because I'm partial because I like it? So I, I had somebody else try it and they were like, oh, this is so good. So there really is a noticeable difference between pasture raised, small farm raised animal than regular store bought meat. I really highly recommend it. And here on our farm, we say happy meat tastes better. We just feel that it's important to raise our animals in an environment where they are happy and healthy and they're on pasture and we believe that that care actually is tangibly taste tasteable, can be tasted in the meat itself. Now let's get down to the nitty gritty details. The questions everybody has is how much meat is half a hog or how much meat is half a beef? Well, today we have picked up a beef from the butcher, so I'm gonna go through that with you. But I also have a video that's called How Much Meat, or What Is Half a Hog, I think is actually the title of it, where we, we actually lay it out on the table and you can see what meat you can expect to get from a half a hog. And I will put a link to that video at the end of this one and also in the show notes down below. Most people have a goal weight of raising a steer to around 1,000 to 1,200 pounds. So I'm gonna talk about a 1200 pound steer for the purposes of this video. We're gonna talk about live weight, hanging weight, and cuts of meat or pounds of meat. Okay, so the live weight is when your farmer or your rancher takes the animal to the butcher, they walk off the trailer onto a scale and they get its weight. That's called live weight. Some farmers will charge you for the weight of the live animal. Then the animal is taken in to be processed, 
they remove the skin, they remove all the innards. What's left is bones and meat and organs and they hang that up and they weigh it and that's either called a carcass weight or a hanging weight. Typically, carcass weight is 63% of um, the live weight. So in a 1,200 pound steer, it would be around 740 pounds, I think. Let me look at my notes. 750 pounds. So you'd have about a 750 pound hanging weight. Some of your farmers are gonna charge you per pound live weight, that's what we typically do, and some will charge you per pound hanging weight. If you're paying hanging weight, there's gonna be a higher per pound price because it's going to weigh less. It really will work out the same just about either way, and typically your farmer is going to be giving you a fair price. I have a tool that I'm gonna show you later on that is gonna help you figure out exactly what kind of a bargain you're getting for your meat. Typically, we will raise a pig to around 250 to 275 pounds. And then again, for pigs, there's averages of what is gonna be the hanging weight and what is gonna be the meat off of that. Like I said, and today we're gonna to focus on beef, but the principles are the same. How the process works is the same. So from that 750 pound hanging weight, started with a 1200 pound live animal, we will expect to get 65 to 75% of the hanging weight in meat and some bones. So 65% of 750 is 490 pounds of meat in the whole animal. And if you were getting half, then it would be half of that, 200 and uh, less than 50, 245 pounds of meat. A quarter would be 122 pounds of meat that you're gonna bring home and put in your freezer. Why does the farmer charge you a live weight fee and then you have to pay the butcher separately? Why can't the farmer just give you just like give you a price and bring the meat to you? The reason for that is because in most states, including Missouri, I'm not allowed to sell you um, the meat, processed meat, unless it has been processed in a USDA certified facility. Those certifications cost the butcher more to maintain, therefore the price goes up. If I am selling you a portion of an animal, I don't need certification for that. Then when it's, once it's at the butcher, it's then that portion is yours. They are processing your meat for you that you've already paid me for. You pay them to process that meat. Now, what I have seen on some websites is some farmers will um, include butcher fees in the price you pay them. So what I imagine is they're probably going to the same farmer or same butcher year after year. They know how much the feeds are, fees are, I'm having a hard time talking, huh? They know how much the fees are and they just roll that into your cost and then they just take that portion of money and pay it directly to the butcher so that it works out the same. You're paying me live animal and the butcher gets your money, but they just collect it all at once just for ease for you, the consumer. These two images right here are available at several places online. I will actually put links to both of them in the description down below. What this is, this shows you what cuts of meat can be made from each section of the animal. So in some instances, if you want all of this one kind of thing, you're not gonna be able to get this other kind of thing because it's made from the same kind of meat. So if you'll take a look at this and figure out what meat does your family normally eat, that's gonna make it a lot easier to talk to your butcher when you call them. The butcher is also gonna to wanna to know whether you want bone in or boneless on your roasts. And they'll do it either way, but what you need to know is that if you have the bones removed, there will be a slight upcharge. The easiest thing for the butcher to make is ground meat because they don't have to cut it neatly. They don't, they just take the bones off, but they don't have to, you know, make it pretty. And so that is the least expensive thing for you to have is hamburger. However, the more detailed cuts you want, like for us on the T-bone, Chris and I want the, I think it's the strip and the filet. I might have those wrong, but anyway, there's a cut of meat off of each side. We want those out. We don't want the T-bone whole. So it costs a little more for us because they're having to debone that meat every time. So there was a little added fee for deboning on our bill. Another thing that they're going to ask you about at the butcher is how many people are in your family or how many people do you want your meat packaged for? Since it's just Chris and I at home now, we get ours packaged for two. So every steak package will have two steaks in it. We do that because it's easy to thaw out more if we're going to have guests or if the girls are home 
But that way, if it's just the two of us, it's the right number in the package. That's another advantage to having your, beet, your meat custom wrapped for you. They'll also ask you how big you want your roasts. And the tip that we learned recently is don't give a specific weight, give a weight range. So if you say, I want four to five pound roast, then they know you're okay with anything in that range and you're gonna get the most meat on it. But if you say, I want four pound roasts, then they're gonna trim this down after they've cut it. And if it it's like four and a half, they're gonna trim it down to four exactly. So it's always good to give your butcher a range that you want your roasts cut in. Yeah, and that other half pound that they trim off, it goes in your ground meat. Goes in your hamburger. So, you know, it's kind of one of those things. If you like more of your meat not to be ground, then that range thing helps you out. Right. Something else that I do for my customers that I wish that farmer would have had for me um, and that I suggest you ask for from your farmer is when I go to drop off my animal at the butcher, I ask if I can see their cut sheet that they're going to mark on when the customer calls. And I take a picture of that and I send that to my customer. So here's an example of one here. If I can find the one from our last butcher, I will also show it right here because then you kind of know what questions they're going to ask you because it's on the sheet. Something else to think about, for instance, when you're um, getting a pig is what do you want cured? Do you want cured bacon or raw bacon? Do you want thick cut bacon or thin cut bacon? Do you want your sausage with some sage seasoning or with no seasoning? Do you want bacon with seasoning? Every butcher has different things that they offer. It's not standard. And so you just have to ask those questions because if you don't ask, you never know what they might have. This skirt steak is a cut of meat that we really enjoy. But when you go to the butcher, it's not something that's typically on their cut list. So you're gonna have to ask for it if you want it. It's also called, I think, flank steak. And it's the meat that's right along the cow's belly or sides, it's flank, right by the outside of the ribs. And so it's usually not cut into steak most time. Most butchers will just throw it into their ground meat. So you'd get it in your hamburger. However, we have learned that this is the cut of meat that most people use for fajitas or for carne asada tacos. It's thin because of its location that's also kind of stringy. So when you want it, you want to have the right seasonings, a little bit of marinade, cut against the grain. Mm. So we always ask for this when we take our beef to the butcher. These are reports the USDA puts out monthly on grass-fed beef sales direct from farmer to consumer and pastured pork sales direct from farmer to consumer. And it actually lists the high and low end of prices and the average price for every cut of meat and for the hanging weight. So if you have a, a farmer who is offering you a hanging weight price, you can actually look at the recent sales and see what they went for and know whether you're being offered a fair price or not. So I'm gonna have to put on my glasses for this part where they go. I'll try and put this graphic up on the screen for you. But for example, this is, let's find the beef one. For a quarter beef, Grass-fed, direct to consumer, retail price was $5.99 to $11.75 a pound. So that says retail. But then it says small and very small producer size. I'm a very small producer. We only took one. The um, average was $3.85 a pound. So I did the math, and had we charged $3.85 a pound for our quarter beef that we sold this time, it would have cost our customer $610. We charged her two dollars per pound live weight so it cost her three or five hundred three dollars so she actually saved money so our price was very fair and then in this section over here it's got like all the different price range of so uh sirloin roast the average is 1070 for grass-fed beef for consumer prices for a ribeye steak average 2131 so we could add all this up in fact i think i'll do that because we wrote down exactly, well, I don't have it for her, I just have it for us. But I think her, her per pound price of actual meat that she brought home, I'm confident that we gave a fair or better than fair price to our customer. Let's go look in the freezer and I will show you exactly what 299 pounds of meat looks like. We have two boxes full up to here of ground beef, 130 pounds. We've got underneath here, this box and the box behind it are both full of roasts. This is our box full of organs and other kinds of things that we set to the side. 
This is our roasts that are left from the last beef that we had processed that did not fit in our upright freezer in the kitchen. We've got a little bit of pork left also. Um, I guess just a whole ham out here and the rest of it went in the upright freezer. And there's a couple of pork steaks that I just slid down in the cracks. Okay, there's a couple of pork steaks down here. And this entire box is full of beef steak from our new um, beef that we just brought home today. Totals. Uh, we got 46 pounds of steak cuts. That's your New York strips, your fillets, your ribeyes, etc. Um, roasts, 124 pounds of roasts, uh, 129 pounds ground meat, and uh, 11 and a half pounds of stuff, uh, organ meat for the dog, and then uh, eight and a half pounds of bones. So for us, this ends up being a very good way to provide our family with healthy meat and uh, filling our freezer so that we're not spending money at the grocery store that we don't need to. And grocery store prices keep going up. So we're very thankful right now that we have all this meat to fill our freezer. Do you have any questions left that I didn't answer in this video? Please leave a comment so I can answer them in a future video. Also, go click right over here and watch that video, What is Half a Hog?